Good afternoon everyone. It's nice to see everyone again. Um, the purpose of this video is I'm going to show you guys how I quarter and cut up small game critters. Um, specifically four-legged animals, rabbits, squirrels. Um, it works up to groundhog size and things like that. Um, there's a lot of ways to cut them up and some people do it where they only take part of it. Um, like. For instance, some people don't do anything with the front halves, some people don't do anything with the ribs, things like that. Um, the method I want to show you is something I've developed over many years of small game hunting. And it's quick, it uses all the meat, and it's very clean. And I think that if you try it, you're going to enjoy it. So, let's get started. So the knife that I'm going to use today um, is actually my favorite skinning knife of all time. Um, it's an old colonial, just a, I don't know, it's probably a 50 or 60 year old knife, but just a great little knife. And the reason I like it, it has a good point and a long, narrow blade. Um, for skinning knife, you know, for working a squirrel's legs, things like that, um, and where I'm going to be deboning it here or quartering it, um, this is just a nice knife. Any knife will really work, but you don't want it to be too big. This is about perfect. Um, cutting board is optional. After you get used to doing them, I've done a lot of them in the field where you can just debone them right there, break them down. Um, but for this circumstance, a nice flat board does make it a little easier. Okay, so here we have this carcass. As you can see, it's nice and clean, no hair. Um, if you guys want or have any questions on skinning them, if you look back at my past video on uh, skinning squirrels, I use the same method and it works really good on all small game critters. So we're going to begin by taking off the front leg. Your shoulder blade's right here. We're just going to take the front leg and prop it up, press our knife in, and cut through there. There'll be one small bone in the bottom. Um, but it typically comes off pretty easy. Okay, we're not going to flip it over and do the other side. Um, again, if you kind of grab by the elbow, kind of prop it up, you can see where the shoulder blade comes out, and just kind of run your knife right behind there. Run it down towards the ribs. It'll come off at the top of the back, and then down in the front. So again, there's another one of our fronts are off. Um, now we're going to go to the back quarters. So for our back quarter, we're going to flip it up and what most guys want to do is they want to cut right along the tail. Um, but that actually doesn't work because your hip joint is on this side of the spine, not on this side. So when you cut this, you lay it down and you're actually going to run your knife right through about here. Right through here, there's a little hump in the hip joint and then you're going to cut back towards the skeleton. You just kind of disconnect the front and you'll start to see that hip socket right there. So you flip it over. I like to make sure to get all the meat on this side. Once I kind of ran around, you can give it one small twist and the whole thing just comes right out very easily. Okay, so there's one of our rear legs. Again, so if you notice here, as I said, if you tried to cut along the tailbone, you run right into that hip socket. So there's this little bump out that you have to go around and then down in to get to the actual socket itself. So on this side, we're going to put pressure, come in right here, and then we go out around and then down. And what I typically like to do is I'll come to the back side and I actually kind of cut out where I want the meat to come off at so I don't waste any. So I get it all on my first slice. So you just kinda, you're running around, disconnecting everything, 
Then you give that one twist and things will come apart. And this one actually, there it is. The actual hip itself is disconnected. Okay. So if you pull hard enough, I guess you can rip that whole piece out, but we don't want that in this meat. So now this is boneless other than our leg bone going through. Okay, so we have our fronts off and our rears off. Typically, this is where most guys would stop. Um, but this next step is, I feel very important because there's still a lot of meat on the carcass and we can still, it's actually very good meat is what's left on um, that we can use. So my next thing to do is I'm going to run my knife at the back of that hip socket into our inner tenderloins. I'm going to disconnect those along the spine. And the ribs will actually come up, so you kind of have to cut, you have to kind of cut them and peel them out and then cut down in again to get to them. Um, but you'll get those cut through. Then I flip it over, I'm going to run my knife down the backbone, back to that hip socket. Then I'm going to run the knife up all the way to the neck. From there, if you kind of tug, you can see that the meat is connected at the bottom of that bone there. And I'm going to cut through to where this cut was. What I've essentially done is I have brought the back strap and connected it to the inner tenderloin as well as the flank all into one boneless piece. So now we have this cut and this cut. We're going to run our knife along the spine and hug it pretty close. You'll kind of feel some of the vertebrae and run all the way to the rib cage, which is where it'll stop. So I'm stopped at the rib cage. I'm then going to continue up the back strap, up all the way to the neck. You can see I've got a couple BBs here. So now I've got the back strap disconnected. The ribs are below us. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to skin the meat off of the ribs. And you do this by simply taking the knife and running it along the face of the rib. And once you get about halfway down the rib, you want to put your pressure towards the rib pretty hard because the rib will it'll come around and drops down. And you want to get all that meat. And sometimes it won't come off as one solid piece, but you do the best you can. And take that all the way down to the bottom of the ribs. So what I've just done here is I've taken all that meat off of the whole side of that rabbit. Right here's our back strap. Right here's our inner tenderloin. Here's our flank. Um, I mean, what a huge piece of meat. And this is all boneless. This is very tender. This is honestly one of the best cuts of meat on the rabbit. Um, and it's a shame that some people waste this. Um, great, great piece. So as you can see, here's kind of the before and after. There's a lot of meat that gets taken off. You cut through here and you'll feel your knife blade kind of tickle off of those vertebrae. Um, and sometimes you can kind of cut and peel it so that you're getting all of it. And we'll flip it over. I'm going to run that all the way down. And actually, the vertebrae is kind of like a V. So if you run real tight to the backbone, there's actually a bone there. But if you come out just a little bit, 
you can run no problem. Let me take that all the way to the neck. Okay. So you're actually just going to cut it off of the spine. Here you can see the small vertebrae as we are taking that meat off. Um, you can hug those. Again, if you hug them really close, you can basically take all the meat off. Um, very similar to filleting a fish. Again, now we're at the rib cage. So we're just going to run our knife down the face of those ribs. And actually, with my finger under here, you can feel, I can feel where that rib is. So I can kind of go through. And sometimes I actually get a hold of this meat so I can pull it away from the ribs so that I can run closer to them. And again, it's not, as you get into the front, sometimes it's hard to get all the meat, but Anything is better than nothing. This side of the ribs has got some more bloodshot um, that we might have to trim off, but I missed a small section, um, but the vast majority is there. So that shows you basically a, you know, a deboned carcass. There's really nothing left. Here's our piece that we just took off. Take my knife here and clean out some of that bloodshot meat. Sometimes they can just be scraped out. You can take your knife and pull that out of it. Okay, so our critter has been completely broken down. We have two rears two fronts and our slabs. Um, as I said before, the carcass has really no meat left on it and uh, it's a great use, complete use of what the animal has provided for us. These big beauties, they are boneless and um, you can cut them in half if you'd like to make them smaller. These guys are going to have a shoulder blade that goes down. Um, there's still plenty of meat on them. And they're definitely worth cooking. And the big boys here have one leg bone running through with a lot of meat on both sides. And of course, um, you know, people might wonder why I go through the extra effort of, you know, doing all this when you could just take some shears, chop the back legs off, and then go along your day. But I mean, at least for me, you can see that there's more meat that you get from it, and it just makes more sense in my eyes um, to use everything that we're given. Okay, guys, so that's how I break them down. As you saw, it's a pretty simple process. Um, in real life, it takes me about one to two minutes to break down a squirrel or a rabbit. Um, once you get some practice, it's really not that hard. Uh, if you guys need more help on skinning them, uh, like I said, check out my past video, the squirrel skinning video. Um, it's a very good source. It's, I break every step down, slow and methodical, so you guys can skin them out like I do to get perfect hides and perfect meat. Um, that's all for today. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. Um, you can subscribe if you'd like. And until next time, thank you.